So they blew up the Star Bridge. Yeah. Violence is the last refuge of the incompetent. Hey guys, Pete here. This will be my breakdown of Foundation Season 1, Episode 9. The first crisis is the penultimate episode of the first season, and it featured a lot of movement towards answering questions and resolving storylines, which means that things seem pretty set up for the finale. Brother Dawn's secret is out. Salvor is starting to internalize her father's wisdom, putting her on a path to become more like her namesake in the book, and the vault has opened. I'll be discussing all of these things after this quick spoiler warning. If you haven't watched episode 9 yet, then this video won't be for you. And with that out of the way, let's get started. So we'll start with Brother Dawn. He doesn't want to be killed and replaced, so he's meeting and planning with Azora to get out of there. And we learn that he's planning on leaving tomorrow and that he'll need a signal damper for the nanobots in his bloodstream. He gets summoned to meet with Dusk at the mural. They talk about how it captures their legacy. He mentions some of the different scenes, including the end of the robot wars, the Golden Horse Rebellion, and the attack on Anacreon and Thespis that we saw in the opening episodes. He's brought him there because he's added their hunt to the mural, and he's done this as a setup to test him to see if he's colorblind. He asks if he can see the three ghillie raptors that he shot, and since he can only see the blue ones, he says yes. After Dusk leaves, he uses the corrective device that Azor gave him, and he realizes that are six, and now he's sure that Dusk knows he's different. He rushes in to pack a bag and leave, but before he can get out of there, Shadow Master Obrecht comes in, saying that Brother Dusk needs to see him right away. He tries unsuccessfully to talk his way out of it, and then he has to use his aura, which also has a weapon mechanism, to knock out the Shadow Master and then escapes to the garden. And this escape sequence, it seemed a little bit funny whenever I watched it the first time. I guess it all makes sense in the end that they were letting him go, because it felt kind of hard to believe that he was able to get out at all. He does though, he has this dramatic sequence that involves this water reservoir and he makes his way outside the palace. He's on his own, he's freezing, and he trades the only thing he has of value, which is his aura, to one of the people that lives down there for his jacket. From there, he's able to make his way to the Scar, Azora's neighborhood, by remembering what she told him about it, and he eventually finds where she lives. She welcomes him and tells him not to worry, that she's installed the signal damper so he doesn't have to worry about being found, and tells him to take a shower. After he goes in, he has an idea about the new name that he's going to take, and he comes back out to find her with a gun in her hand, and she takes a shot. He's able to get outside of the apartment, but he's pursued by a group of goons, and then he's captured by himself. He looks up to see someone that looks exactly like him. When he wakes up, he sees that his Imperial nanobots are being transferred to a different clone, who was raised outside the palace. He explains to him that someone was able to smuggle some of Cleon's DNA out, and they've been working on this plan for decades. It's a coordinated effort, Azora was part of it, and it seems like someone powerful would have to be behind it because they're playing a long game here, and they have access. He explains all this with a British accent so you can tell them apart, which is kind of funny, but he shows him that he's been practicing, that he can copy him exactly, and the plan is for him to replace the original Dawn. They altered his DNA after the fact so that he would become different, and the replacement is an exact copy. The reason that they altered the DNA was because they needed to get him out of the palace. They wanted to orchestrate a reason for him to run on his own, fearing for his own survival. And when the nanobot transfer is complete, we see that the new clone heals immediately, so now he's basically just a normal person and has outlived his usefulness. But, as I mentioned earlier, they let Dawn get away so they could follow him to these people. And so Dusk and the Shadow Master and a group of soldiers swoop in for a rescue. Fake Dawn is killed. Shadow Master Obrecht uses that cloaking device that we saw earlier in the season to sneak up behind and cut his throat. Azora is taken prisoner so they can interrogate her, and Dusk says that he wants a memory audit done on all of the dead people in the room. After they lead Azora away, Dusk explains that they would be able to overlook that, but the matter of his difference is rather more complicated. 
Don looks at it like he's a victim. There was a conspiracy, and it's not his fault that he's been altered. But I mean, come on. That's why they have the backups. This has been his dilemma the whole time. He's a reminder of their vulnerability, and thus basically says what logic is there to keep him around. Brother Don pleads for him to forget logic and try empathy, and in the end it's not up to Dusk anyways, it's up to Brother Day and he'll be back soon, and I suppose that it'll boil down to how he's feeling after his showdown with the Luminists. On the Foundation side of things, we see a flashback to a young Salvor talking to her dad. She asks them where they came from, and they talk about the origins of humanity. Humans are thought to have inhabited a single system, but they don't remember which anymore. He throws out the idea of Ceres, Alpha Centauri, and says that some people think we came from some place called Earth. All of this is leading to questions about Anacreon's and Thespans too. How they're all humans, and they all came from the same place, so then how come they hate them so much? Her father tells her that rational thinking shares skull space with our emotions, and sometimes the emotions went out. Millions of people died when the Star Bridge came down, and then the Empire killed millions more, and who won? And he brings out that trademark phrase, violence is the last refuge of the incompetent. And he's using all of this to make the point that this is how they know the Empire's gonna fall. Past behavior is the best predictor of future performance. Salvor was able to stay awake for the jump, just as Gale was able to when she traveled to Trantor from Synax. It turns out that they did make it back to Terminus because Lewis connected himself to the navigation and got them there after he was shot, and of course he didn't survive. Since she's the only one that's awake and she can't get a hold of anyone on Terminus, she ends up leaving the Invictus doing a spacewalk to get back to her ship. While she's there, she reunites with Hugo, and they realize the Null Field is probably why they can't reach anyone on the planet. He makes the suggestion that they just run away from it all, but she says that she needs to fix this, and so he goes back to the Invictus, and because she's immune to the Null Field, she heads towards the planet. On the surface, it turns out they were right, everyone's knocked out, and so Salvor heads to the vault. There she finds her mother passed out, with the Prime Radiant in her hand. She takes that and she concentrates, and through memories, actually Gale's memories, she remembers how to open it. And when she does, the vault reacts, it opens, and the Null Field is lifted. People are starting to wake up. On the Invictus, when Hugo and the Thespans arrive, they couldn't find Farah. It turns out she's boarding one of those Thespan Lancers and takes control of it. And at this point, everyone's heading towards the surface. Salvor moves towards the vault and her mother tries to stop her, but then the Anacreons fire a warning shot. That's followed by the Thespan ships arriving. Everyone on board starts to come out, and these ships have this thing where the captain can remotely control the firepower, and so that's enough to get the Anacreons to stand down. Salvor believes this is where she's supposed to be. She sees everything converging in a single crisis, and things get more intense when Farah arrives in that Lancer and destroys the other ones that were already there. She has the same remote control device for the ship, so that gets the Thespans to stand down, and she wants to kill Salvor who tries to convince her that the Invictus is the most powerful ship that they'll ever get their hands on, so why destroy it? Why not use it for leverage? She makes the suggestion that they all band together, and then she draws off her father's words saying, let our logic speak louder than our emotions. Farrah's soldiers are receptive to this, and Rowan tells her that the hunt is over. Then something like a bolt of lightning shoots out of the vault, and Farrah decides that shooting it with her ship seems like the best course of action. This isn't something that Salvor can let happen, so she uses the Grand Huntress's bow to kill her, which increases tensions with everyone. But then they're all taken aback when Harry Seldon walks out of the vault. He says, well this is encouraging, Anacreons, Thespans, and Termini, seeing you all gathered here gives me hope. We might actually pull this off. And the episode ends there. So this definitely felt like we're getting somewhere. On the Brother Dawn side of this, he wanted the genetic dynasty to forget about logic and try empathy. On the Foundation side, Salvor advocated for letting rational thought speak louder than emotion. 
Brother Don is still a problem. He's different, but he does come from the dynasty. He was raised by them, educated by them, and still, by their own code, they should destroy him. The one character who was driven purely by emotion, who based on her past was compelled towards revenge against the Empire, met her end. And we'll have to wait and see if Dawn suffers the same fate. There's a parallel there. Farrah couldn't see beyond that thing that drives her, that defined her. And it will be interesting to find out if Brother Day is able to do that. I have to say, I'm kind of happy that the Farrah story is over. And it appears that Harry Selden anticipated that there would be conflict. This is consistent with what his character did in the books. Only here, it seems like he was counting on these three factions coming together, all to be part of this new foundation. So we got there in a different way, but it seems like the Terminus side of things is going to start to be more like the original story. Based on everything that we've seen here, Salvor is an evolving character, and it seems likely that she'll take everything that she's learned from this experience to emerge as the leader of the Foundation going forward. This is one of those situations where watching that saga featurette they put out a couple of weeks ago kind of spoiled the Invictus storyline. Because I saw that, I was pretty sure they were going to jump straight back to Terminus. But I thought it was a fair ending for the Lewis character, and they handled it pretty well. He was able to see past his own mistakes, get behind Salvor, and ultimately he saved the Foundation. The Brother Dawn and Azor conclusion was a pretty big surprise. I thought she seemed suspicious a couple of episodes back, but they did a pretty good job of selling the fact that the relationship was organic, that it happened naturally, that she was actually into him, and it's not hard to see how he got caught up in it. I suppose the most popular theory was that Demerzel might be behind what happened to the clones because of her proximity to the program and her general mysteriousness. I imagine that could still be the case, but it's kind of exciting that there is another force out there that's making trouble for the Cleons. I think the scope of this operation hints that there's a lot more to explore there, and I kind of doubt that we'll get any reveals about who's behind it by the end of the first season. We have a lot of mysteries swirling around. The connection between Salvor and Gale, she definitely saw her memories and used that to open the Prime Radiant. We didn't see any Gale at all this episode, but I saw on Apple TV that she is the thumbnail for the next one, so maybe we'll get some more answers. Who's responsible for altering Dawn, and will that turn out to be related to the Starbridge attack? There really isn't an answer to what happened there yet. How will Brother Day respond to Dawn's differences when he learns about them? Is there something more to the Invictus and why it became a ghost ship 700 years ago? There's still that message of EXO, EXO to consider there. It was nice to see Harry make an appearance on Terminus. I had been waiting for that to happen. And that brings up questions about if there's a difference between the hologram Gale was talking to on the Raven and the one we see here. There's also a question of how the vault got there in the first place. One of the things the original Foundation trilogy explores is related to what Abbas said to young Salvor. Past behavior is the best predictor of future performance. Asimov based his galactic empire on the fall of Rome because, generally speaking, humanity tends to not learn from its mistakes. The idea of history repeating itself, or that it doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes if you prefer that one. Even tens of thousands of years in the future, people are still people. And that's where the idea of psychohistory comes in. Now we'll have to wait until next week to see what else Harry has to say about his plan to the future Foundation. I guess for where we're at, it's promising that he seems pleased with what's going on, even after Pharaoh is blasting the vault and trying to destroy it. It appears that things are falling into place, and I'm looking forward to seeing how they wrap things up next week, and I think that's a great place to leave things. Let me know in the comments what you thought about episode 9, what you're hoping to see in the finale, and anything else you got on your mind about Foundation. I will have another Foundation video out this week. I've been working on something, but I wanted to wait until this episode dropped. So check back for that, and please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.